Hey everybody, welcome back to our March 2025 production update. Uh, we've got lots of stuff going on. Uh, first things first, just want to let everyone know that we are hiring for a lot of new positions. Um, so if you go to our website and our blog, not only can you find the long format uh, write up about everything that's going on here at the company, uh, but you can also find a link to see what sort of positions we have open at the company. Right now, I believe we have marketing manager, um, someone to help with e-commerce, uh, somebody to, we, we're looking for more engineers to help us with the production side as well as the design side. Um, someone to help with management for our production team. Um, so yeah, make sure to check out our website. If you don't find a position that you feel is relevant to what you're good at, we also have a general application form where you can tell us what you're good at and if we think um, we have a fit to work together, uh, we'll all be also be able to see your application there as well. Uh, in other news, uh, Michael and the rest of the team have been working on figuring out what our new office expansion is going to look like. Right now we have something like 40 or 50 pallets on the way here for uh, end of February and March, which means that we're going to be using up a lot of space um, in the warehouse to store. And um, we're also working, as if, if you guys don't know, we're also been slowly working on the four by eight machines. And so our space requirements to be building all those machines is probably going to get a lot larger. And so our first phase is likely to tear up the floor in our current kind of desk space here and then potentially looking at moving to the upstairs portion of this building for desk space as well as taking over a bit of our uh, neighbor space as well. It's likely that a lot of this will happen in the summer and we're currently in uh, we're currently in talks with the landlord to figure out what the plan is going to be so we'll keep everyone in in the loop as that happens. Uh, all mill shipments have been a bit sporadic this past month because we were short on the um, end plates for the SLB cases. Uh, we express ship some of them and they're supposed to be here. Today I think is the, yeah, today is the 25th. They're supposed to be here at the end of the week. So we should be able to resume shipping at full speed once we get those in. Um, we have a very small number of Mark 1s uh, to ship out, the Alt Mill Mark 1s to ship out. So I believe after we get those, we'll be able to finish up the rest of the batch. This past month, we also released the STL files for the uh, motor covers for the NEMA 23 closed loop stepper uh, drivers. So if you guys don't know, we launched the Alt Mill Mark 2 back in January. And one of the updates was to have the covers for the motors to protect the wires. And because it's a cross compatible update, um, people who, if you, may, if you want to uh, install your own covers, you can 3D print them yourself. Um, I might be wrong, but we'll likely get the injection. I, I believe we're injection molding the actual covers for production. We may have them on sale later down the line. But obviously, um, if you have a 3D printer, it's likely going to be cheaper, easier to do that yourself. So feel free to check out our blog post or our resources because the file should be linked there as well. Also in other news, uh, the Altmill 4x8 uh, is currently under development. Uh, we have some videos on their blog showing some of the first looks at the power transmission. Um, I noticed that there's been a lot of people asking why we're not using ball screws um, and the reason is because one, if we use the ball screws that we use currently on the alt mill at the 8 foot length, um, they'll whip or kind of like be like a skipping rope. If uh, we use really thick ones, we need, well based on our calculations, you need really really thick ball screws to be able to counteract the whip, at which point the cost of the ball screws would be exp so expensive that it doesn't make a lot of sense to use them. The current prototypes we're using rack and pinion. Um, these are very commonly used in industrial machines. I know some people feel that the ball screws are better because they're more precise, 
but in this case, for simplicity, ease of use and cost, the Iraq opinions work uh, pretty well. We have also seen people comment about using the fixed ball screw with the moving ball nut. Um, that's something we can look into as well. It's a lot more complicated than rack and binion, obviously. Given our research, it's pretty much, it's pretty likely that we'll stick with the rack and pinion because it's the kind of like the best of both. It's the best option that we have for this type of machine. We also had a couple parts come in for the smalt mills uh, with the anodi red anodized uh, plates. Those are slowly being put together for prototyping at this moment. Uh, no specific news on those yet, but um, I think they look pretty cool. So you can check out some pictures on the blog as well. For long mill, uh, we have been shipping out those as typical. We did have a short period where we paused the shipping because we needed more of the inductive uh, sensor cable extensions that are in the 48 by 30 variants of long mill only. However, it turns out we have a lot of five meter inductive, sensor, uh, inductive sensors. And so rather than providing an extension cable with a short extension, sorry, a short cable for the inductive sensor, you just have one inductive sensor with a really long cable that does exactly the same thing. And it'd be argu arguably it's better to use one long cable because you reduce the risk of issues in the signal or the durability of the connection um, of having a cable plus an extension. So it's just one long cable. Um, there's a good chance that we might just change everything over to long cable and maybe even potentially look at um, how well the system that we have for the alt mill works because for the alt mill we have the inductive sensor plus a little pigtail uh, plus the length of cable that you need so um, that simplifies the assembly because we can have the same sensor batch and then just swap cables as we need to depending on the length that we need. Um, so there may be a slowdown uh, for the long mills because we are waiting for the SLB case parts. But like we were saying earlier, we have some coming in uh, pretty soon. So the actual impact of, the, of us running out might be pretty limited. This past month, we also received the next batch of G-Control panel computers. Uh, we have shipped now from that batch 294 units. Um, which represents about 350 computers in total. We're now waiting for our next batch of 500 computers that are expected to come um, probably early to mid-March. And those will cover the rest of the queue that we have. And it should let us have a little bit extra so that new customers buying the computer should be able to get them shipped out um, without much of a wait time. And lastly, um, for the auto spin, we have now put out the call for beta testers. And we have a small batch of people uh, getting ready to test them for all the major uh, CNC machines that the auto spin is good for, uh, which include the long mill, the Shapoko, and the Winfinity. And um, we're still waiting on the uh, beta units to come in from production. Uh, I believe we have about 35 that are being cr produced right now. And I believe we're going through some uh, next level uh, uh, tuning for the speed control, but otherwise we're ironing out the last um, bugs for that and we should get those routers in in the next couple of weeks. After the routers come in and the beta testing is finished, we'll start production probably in April if I had to guess. So um, I would expect units to start shipping sometime this summer at the earliest. Johan says, okay, I'm accurate. Uh, Johan says we're trying to push for spring. Last day of spring is well, Daniel and Yuan are planning to go to China uh, in April. Yeah, Daniel and Yuan are planning to go to China in April. Um, one, to check out the production for the auto spin and also check out other stuff because, you know, electronics and stuff we make in China. That'll be in April. And I think if everything looks good at the factory, 
then we can make a big batch of the auto spins and everyone will get an auto spin and there'll be an exciting and great time. I think that's pretty much it. If you want to learn more about what's going on, we have the blog, so make sure to check out the blog. Otherwise, I'll see you next month. Bye-bye.